during the period between Passover and Shavuos, we count the Omer. An Omer is a sheaf of grain. Grain ripens with the onset of spring, which is when Pesach falls. By Shavuos, which is halfway through the spring, we are generally receiving the first fruits. On Shavuos, we also bake loaves of bread from the new crop and offer them on the altar in the temple. Counting the days is an expression of enthusiasm and expectation. Therefore, Shavuos is a happy time because it establishes that efforts in our livelihood have been successful. The Gemara also explains that the revelation on Mount Sinai occurred on Shavuos. Therefore, in counting the 50 days from the Exodus to the giving of the Torah, we are also counting the days from when we received our freedom to when we received our mission as a nation. It takes more than freedom alone to be a member of a nation of rabbis. To succeed, a person must know how the world works, to have a flexible mind, and to have a glimpse of the Creator. To obtain these qualities, the counting of the Omer makes use of Kabbalah. Each of the seven weeks represents one of the seven spheres. For example, the first week is devoted to kindness, the third to beauty, the last to dominion. In addition, each day of the week represents a sphere. Therefore, on the 49 days, we permute the seven spheres against each other. For example, we hear strength with success and basics with prestige. In this way, we develop creativity in ourselves and see the world as a whole and with its components. The ancient art of alchemy has motives like the ones used in Kabbalah. For example, in Kabbalah, there are three prime letters, seven double letters, and twelve simple letters. These make up the entire olive base and are considered the totality of creation. In alchemy, there are three prime substances, seven basic metals, and twelve chemical processes. To a certain extent, they represent everything in the physical world. The spheres, on the other hand, are the garments of Hashem in the seeds of the human soul. Both systems tie their seven items to the seven principal celestial objects and their twelve items to the twelve constellations of the zodiac. One of the goals of alchemy was to change lead into gold by means of the philosopher's stone. The Philosopher's Stone had many wonderful properties, among them an elixir of life. The search for it was considered a person's magnum opus. This is similar to the Sefer Yitzira, when in discussing the letters of the Olive Base, tells us to understand them, use them, combine them, and even change them. In this way, we come up with new ideas and insights. In addition, we should consider good and evil, beginning and end, in the four directions of the compass. If we are diligent, we will recognize a creation's place and function and how Hashem rules over everything. This idea is alluded to in Ethics of Our Fathers, Mishnah the third Mishnah in the second chapter, where we are told that things like mathematics and gematrias are appetizers for Chachma, but the study of bird's nest, kinim, and menstruation are the body of Halacha. Mishnah's kinim starts by saying that birds can be brought as sin offerings or burnt offerings. It then explains the effects of 
birds flying from one nest to another. It can become very intricate, especially when it computes the possible results of seven nests. It is an elaborate permutation. There are similar calculations in Yabamas when considering the effect of illicit relations involving complex family relationships. The prime use of the spheres, though, is to understand the nature and the will of God. This may be, tr- the, this may be the true philosopher's stone. The spiritual acumen we develop from this a- exercise allows us to transform grains of barley into fine wheat bread, elevates us from being slaves in Egypt to prince to priests of the all-knowing and teaches us how to open the eyes of the blind and bring prisoners in darkness into the light of day. Thank you.